welcome to Matt Tries. Um, we had a little bit of a hiccup, the uh, recorded game footage without audio again, but I will then proceed to make this episode a very quick one, actually, with that problem in mind. Um, I will be showing you a video of what I have done the first time through and uh, narrate you through it. Um, so, some interesting things going on with uh, Neverwinter Online. Uh, of course, this is the second Dungeons & Dragons based game to be released for the internet. Um, the first one is D&D &D Online from, uh, I believe it's Turbine has the rights to it. It's alright, but it's very, very extremely grindy with very little of any plot. Um, from what I can tell thus far of this game, and I have played a good solid hour, hour and a half of it now, much more plot driven. Uh, also, while I'm talking here, uh, notice the nice shiny visuals. Uh, keep a close eye on this woman now, as she's about to do something very interesting. That can't be good for your complexion. <laughs> yeah, she's an undead elf, apparently, and she's apparently a uh, main big bad, at least for the beginning of the game. Also, not sure how many of those skills are actually available for Thief, but they look cool nonetheless. And some very nice animation for these cutscenes, I might add. But, going on. Um, my first impressions were actually not that great for this game. Um, I did finally get online with the game, I believe, in the very early afternoon, just before the massive spike of people that drove the game near its breaking point, and the visuals, as you're going to see fairly soon, were glitchy at best. I was at least able to competently kill everything I needed to kill, and didn't take much damage for it because, again, la massive amount of lag that was going on in the game at that time. But uh, since then, they have actually added a number count for the servers, which has essentially capped out people until others get out of the server so other people can join in. I believe tonight it took us about somewhere around 20, 10 to 20 minutes and three of us managed to all get in. So despite the wait, it's a worthwhile wait and you can almost assure yourself that, uh, an actual entry at some point. Yeah, also for some reason hicked up uh, the video there. Not entirely sure why. Um, I didn't do it the second time, which is odd. Yeah, I was actually trying to record it a second time when things failed again. But I digress. Essentially, um, they have made a level cap which has gotten rid of all the lag issues I was having, so I actually have a much better perspective of the actual combat now. But I was going to tear them apart for how nasty the lag was, but they seem to have realized that problem towards the middle of the afternoon and, again, put a server cap off for a number of players. And it's around about 20 minute wait or so, depend all depending. So as long as you're prepared to get set up ahead of time and then go off and do other things really quick before you actually get in, then it's not that bad of a problem right now. I would suggest that maybe in a couple of weeks to a month, the things will finally slow down to a point where you won't have that much of a problem anymore. Um, so story-wise, story has been okay. Um... The voices, if you think about it while you're actually watching the visuals, the visuals, the guys look kind of like dead puppets, so it just kind of meh. So the NPCs kind of look like they're dead on their feet and they don't really wander around or anything either, so... Mm. Then again, I've had wandering NPCs and MMOs and it never turned out very well. Oh, by the way, uh, here's character generation in extremely fast mode for the first time doing it. Um, so yeah, I remade uh, my elf cleric 
from a previous uh, D&D campaign, and uh, I am much saddened that I cannot use a longsword. They just give me some weird gimmicky cleric symbol thing, and I shoot arrows of some sort because of said weapon, which really doesn't make that much sense, but you know what? Whatever. Um, campfire that I'm showing you here, you can actually stand near a campfire, and when it's not lagging, you can stand next to a campfire and actually get healed, like so. The amount that it heals will quickly improve as time goes on. Uh, by about level 4, it'll actually be healing you 50s instead of 20s. Yeah, notice the dead look on this guy's face, even though he's supposed to be talking to you right now. Yeah, um, I would also complain about the voice acting, but as one of my friends brought up, which is very true, it very much feels, as corny as the dialogue is, it also kind of feels like the same kind of corny dialogue you expect to hear out of a GM anyways. So it's actually not all that bad, all considering it only helps improve the actual genuine D&D feel to a certain degree. Um... Again, despite the fact that it looks like a dead puppet, you have to say that the textures are looking at least fairly decent for an MMO. The visuals altogether, at first, from what I'd seen of stuff, it looked like it was going to be another WoW-style art thingy, but I'm very happily seeing that it's less cartoony than I thought it was originally looking, and looks a heck of a lot better. Um, another complaint that bo all my friends actually have is that we can't zoom in the cameras. You are stuck at the same length away, and we would like to be able to zoom in and look at details a little more often, please. Please, Cryptic. Oh, speaking of other things Cryptic could possibly fix. Um, Cryptic, when I get out my, with my friends and we can actually meet each other at the be very beginning of the game, we would like to actually meet up with each other and group with each other at the very beginning of the game. We're not dummies and we know how it works. And, and I don't see why you would put a level cap against us being in a team. It just seems kind of douchey. It's really not the way to go about it and it quite annoyed all of us after also spending a huge amount of time just trying to get into the same uh, instance. That was also a major problem, which you really need to fix. There needs to be a higher cap than just five people, please. Parties of people will like to be able to get together at the very beginning of the game. We don't care that we have to do the main missions separately so much, because, well, it's supposed to be our big main beginning of the game focus. But we'd like to be able to party when we can party, please. Um... That off my chest. Uh, here's the skills. Um, as far as I'm aware of this game, there's not really much you can really do. Only you can, only thing you can really do is at the beginning of the game, when you're game, making a character, you can reroll the stats to try and get your main stats up as high as you want them to. But the game won't necessarily always agree to give you everything you want. Excuse me. The best I could do, I believe was 18 for my main stat and 14 for my secondary, my two secondary stats. So all in all, not the greatest deal there. Um, yeah, the dwarf here had a great reaction for me. I, I burst into laughing when I first heard his really out there accent. Um, I wouldn't call it racist accent, but it just seemed very awkward and forced, so it gave me a good laugh. Again, something a GM would probably be forced into doing when they were trying to play a dwarf for the players with them at the table. Ugh, sorry. I'm sorry, yawns just keep rolling in out of nowhere. I, I, I'm still good for another half hour to an hour yet before I even get tired, but that's another point. Um... Almost about to the ten, almost eleven minute mark actually on this video. Um, what else is there to talk about? The visuals are definitely nice. Um, there's plenty of fireplaces when you really need them to sit down for a moment and heal. 
Um, being a cleric, I actually have a, a second attack, which allows people to heal by attacking the things I'm attacking. And notice that massive rubber banding there? Yeah. That was what things were like before they made surfer caps. I also get the feeling they are going to be creating a lot of spare servers because this thing was a huge today. I mean, they were just literally crowding in. And yes, that is the same character from the fancy opening. Um, lots of people in there. Again, going to be quite a while to wait, so be prepared for that. Um, worth the wait as far as I'm concerned. I mean, this story has voice acting all the way through, and it's probably one of the better stories I've heard through an MMO in quite a long while, to be quite honest. When you compare it to the things, other things I've been playing lately, like um, Scarlet Blade, which has the most paper-thin plot of go here, do this, go here, do this, mixed in with what I suppose is supposed to be titillation for 16-year-olds. Yeah, it gets a little tedious and boring. Um, this game, however, does not go for the cheesecake. It takes the setting very seriously, has some decent visuals that you would expect from the franchise, actually. Uh, the the odd, the slightly odd yet cute way that the elves look and so on and so forth, and the the silly accents of the dwarves. The only thing I can really say that Cryptic really needs to focus on one of these days is getting some real voice actors, please. Your programmers aren't voice actors, man. They just aren't. I'm sure they have fun doing it, but they just aren't voice actors. Um... If you can get past the cheesiness of the voice acting, it's a perfectly fine uh, voice acting wise, uh, story wise. You, as you're seeing actually right now, this is the big finale for the opening bit. After this, you can actually party up with people and start adventuring. I have done one entire dungeon with my friends, to which we actually were trying to save the crown of Neverwinter from being stolen, but a group of thugs which may be a reference to some of the street gangs in the from the other cryptic game, um, Champions Online, uh, stole the crown. So we're going to be going after them, but uh, some people have actual jobs amongst the two friends that I had on tonight. So we pretty much went, you know what, yeah, it's kind of getting late. Might as well call it here for tonight. Um... But yeah, the, the, the game does start you off kind of the basic, oh, you just washed ashore, you lost everything, start over from scratch, sort of spiel. Then they tell you to go out and save some people, uh, to which you do while killing some undead. And then they tell you to go collect some arrows, which you do while killing some more undead. But then right after that, they're like, okay, we're sending you out to this guy, the guy that you met at the very beginning. Yeah, he's already waiting for you over by the gate, the the side gate here for Neverwinter. And what you're going to do is you're going to go in there and you're going to try and save this bridge. Otherwise, like the, was essentially, I guess, the city guard will be pretty much under siege by a giant undead monster that would mash them all. So you become the epic hero of the moment and save everybody's ass which I'm about to get to if the rubber banding would stop. Actually, I'm going to fast forward this a little bit quick. So, uh, yeah, getting to the end of this bit, uh, again, trying to fast forward things a little bit. Um, Dead Eyes here is about to get his ass smacked. Uh, you do get to meet him a couple of times. You're not really attached to him, but it's kind of a shame to, that a guy you've met more than once instantly gets snuffed off at the beginning of the game. And the first thing you need to do is report into his captain then after this. Again, lots of really glitchiness from this because of the massive lag I was having at the time, but because they put the limit caps, again, I must repeat, it looks a lot better than this. It flows a lot better than this. And actually, those undead technically only take like two shots. This big hulk, however, oh my word. He is an interesting fight. I will give them that. I mean, you can already see it, even though, again, the lag, but... He was an interesting first fight for a boss. And it's a nice setup for what will probably come after this. Um... 
But yeah, that's about it right now. As far as I'm concerned, this is a worthwhile game, and being that Cryptic is behind this, this also means that, well, getting free po uh, free to play points to get cash items is not impossible. It will take a bit of grinding, and to be honest, as really nice as the combat actually is when there's no lag, I can f see myself possibly going for that because the combat in this game is pretty dang good. It is pretty darn tight, and it's a little less wonky than some of the other ones I've seen out there. I would say it's almost as tight as DDO, but not as so extremely tight as to make the game nearly impossible like it does at some points in DDO. D&D Online. So, they've definitely thought about things, and they've given it some polish. Um, my only other critique is that the classes are very limiting. There's essentially two fighters. There's a heavy armor and there's a heavy weapons fighter. There's a thief, or rogue if you will, who does the stab from behind stuff and the really quick stabbing. There's a mage. There's a cleric. And then there is coming soon. Also with the races, my biggest complaint, obviously, is that there's only one elf race. Wood elves. The typical elves. Every bleeding time, come on. You know you want you know we want to see Drow, and I know for a fact you bastards are gonna make us grind for cash points so we can get it. <sighs> oh well. Well overall, this has definitely been a worthwhile play for the hour and a half I managed to get to it. And uh it's I guess it's worthwhile to try and end it right here with the title of Neverwinter. I enjoyed it, and I hope you all enjoyed too. See you all later.